Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? Justin Hombach here and welcome to today's video, the full note for note lesson of the newest liquid tension experiment single called The Passage of Time. Here we go. <laughs> LTE has released the first single of uh, their newest record since 30 years, 20, 20 years now. And of course I have to uh, transcribe it, learn it, play it, master it, kind of master it and teach it to you guys. And here we are right now in this video, in this lesson, the lesson of Passage of Time by Liquid Tension Experiment. Is there anything more about to say? No. Usually I say you can download the tabs in the description box. There's a link where you can download it. But I won't say it this time because I want to support another YouTube channel. A channel where I have kind of, well, for me personally, I don't know if he knows who I am, but it's kind of the last year, a little bit of a race who has the first transcription out there for some Petrucci singles and for some Dream Theater singles two years ago I was the first one who covered um, some of the songs in under 10 hours or something like that and he was the first one who transcribed it and put a guitar profile or a guitar pro kind of video out there and he was always a little bit earlier than me just just uh, but I covered it but he is doing a really really great work please support even Bradley you will find the link to this video in the description box go download the tabs there and support his channel leave a like a subscribe and a comment on this channel and say hi from me when you are writing under his video so far so much for that before we're going straight to the video two things one of course the shout out section will come soon but another thing is I now have a discord channel a discord server you can go to my discord server you'll find the link in the description box uh, because I want to go a little bit more and more away from Facebook kind of really annoyed by Facebook and on discord on my discord server I can teach I will have some open teaching some kind of live views or live um, sessions where I'm going to explain some stuff what's in my mind right now uh, but more of this will come soon, hopefully, hopefully, and yeah, and have a little bit of more a deeper connection to you guys. So if you have Discord, go join my Discord server. And if you don't have Discord, download it. Discord is a really, really cool program. It's for free. It's really usable. Download it and move and join the Progress Nation group on Discord. All right. So much for that, now let's check out the shoutout section, the section where I say thank you to all of my community, to you guys, and reply to two comments of my newest videos. Let's go. Alright, and the first comment is from Kus Chales. Nice teaching, sir. I can't understand the words. I only watch your fingers on Fred and how you play it. Thanks. By the way, well, this is the magic of music and from the magic of visual stuff that you can see what I'm doing here. This is from my video, Marty Friedman, Beautiful Arpeggio Lesson. Uh, one of my first videos <laughs> and for a long time one of my most success successful videos, uh, which I really don't understand because it's only on German and it was made under the worst condition that could be. It was kind of 2 a.m. It was really, really hot. My cats are meowing out of the door. I had the door closed and the cats are meowing. I was sweating. I was it was stressful as hell. And somehow a lot of people are watching this video, which is, which is kind of embarrassing for me because I don't, I'm not really proud of this video, but thank you. Who's Charles? Charles. All right, let's go to comment number two. And the next comment is from a how to write a solo like Dime Part 1, the Dimeback Scale video. And Jason V was saying, thank you for taking something so complicated and breaking it down for a dumb ass like me. Well, this is my job as a teacher, um, to see things, to analyze them, to understand them and to break them down for you a little bit easier, to make it easier. And what's that kind of noise which my cats are making in the kitchen? Amy. All right, so much for the shoutout section. Thank you for commenting. If you want to support my channel, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment if you want to get shoutouted in my comment section. So much for that. Now let's go straight to the lesson of the passage of time by Liquid Tension Experiment. Here we go. So the first two intro riffs are those ones. <laughs> Yeah. 
so and first we have this kind of sequence here and get used to this because um, a lot of the riffing from this song is based around this kind of idea okay we have 0, 2, 3 on the E string. Sorry, I have a new Ibanez a 7 string here, so I have to use this one. So this is a 7 string and this is my E string. So, so we have 0, 2, 3, and then we're going to the B on the A string, the B flat, the flat 5, G, E, and then we have alternating between the B flat and the A, but this time on the 6th and on the 5th fret from the E string, so we can a little bit of vibrato here and then we're repeating it but now we are playing a little bit of Phrygian dominant kind of scale here and instead of playing the G we are playing the G sharp going to F going to E then we're repeating the first uh, pattern and then we're playing this idea um, root um, root, 4, flat 5, octave, minus 7, flat 5, minor 3rd, root. So, as I've said, all of this riffing, all of this riffing is based around this kind of bluesy metal scale with sometimes a combination of the Phrygian dominant scale. Okay, and then we have the first intro main riff which goes like this. So again we have our basic pattern I'm playing the seventh in the octave so we're repeating it but this time we are not going or the second time we're not going to the flat five and the uh, fourth we're going from the fourth to the minor third and then again we're going to flat second to major third and then next riff goes like this We now here have some power chord action, first E power chord, then 7th um, and octave as a high on, flat 5, 4th, and then we're playing D, A major uh, with the D sharp, sorry, the C sharp in bass, so it's basically the index finger one flat below, then we're playing two times the C, and we're repeating it, and then we're playing D with the F sharp in bass, B flat power chord, the flat 5 we can play it also here, the flat 5 is power chord. Now comes a little bit more of a proggy riff where we have a mixture between 4-4 four, four and 5-4 time signature and it goes like this. Okay, and here first we are playing this idea, E, F sharp, G, E octave. And then descending. Then we're playing this kind of riff as a pedal note riff. And in between we have the E and then the D. Sorry. E going to the B. And then we have the triplet run which goes like this. And here for we are playing again E, F sharp and G and then adding the B and back again. So this is the first section. Now the second section goes like this. And here we are starting with sorry, E, G, A and F sharp on the fourth fret of the D string and then jumping to 7, 8, 7 on E and D string the B, the C and the A. Now we have two triplet ones to fulfill that 5-4 bar and those two are go goes like this. 
five, seven, five, with a zero in between, and three, five, and four. So, all right, all together. We are repeating this section three times, and the fourth time we are not playing the descending triplet button, but instead we are playing those two, where we have the C and the D with the B in octave, so 8, 10, and 9, and then 10, 12, 14. All right, after the section comes this section. Here again we have a 4, 4 and 5, 4 bar, which we are dividing into 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. Groupings of 3 and 2, therefore 3 and 3 and 2 equals 8, so 8, 8, 4, 4, and 3 and 3 and 2 and 2 equals 10, 10, 8, 5, 4. The notes that we are playing on the bass note are E, F sharp, G, going to A, C, D, and C sharp, adding the Dorian kind of vibe from the Dorian scale minor scale with a raised six. Then we're playing alt. Then we're playing everything again up to the C, and instead of the D and the C sharp, we're playing again D and F sharp, and then repeating it. Okay, and in between every note and the second time, we are playing the open. Um, B and the open E string. So now the next section is the first tricky section and in slow it goes like this. Alright, and here I transcribed and I played the following. We are starting off with the E here in the 12th fret. And it's basically the same idea with the. with this kind of riffing here, but everything up to an octave here and with a bit of different fingering. So, first off, we are starting 12, 14, 15. And then we have to use our roll technique a lot here because we have to jump from the D string to the B string 15. Sorry. So this is also a pretty good exercise for our roll technique in every finger. Then we're going to the D. And then we're playing the triplet one with a B in between. Then we are doing a little bit of stretch here. Uh, again, the roll technique with the pinky. And here again, also the roll technique with the pinky. 12, now on the G string, um, not 12, sorry, 14, and now on the G string, 16, 17, going to 17 on the E string. The There the triplet run goes like this. This one's a bit tricky because the picking pattern is a bit different. We don't have string skipping here, we have now economy picking or sweep picking, especially in the upward direction. So I have in frets uh, 14, 19, 16, and 15. And there, those three nil notes I sweep up. So, and then we are repeating everything again three times, and the fourth time, or Three times? No, two times. Sorry, two times. No, one time. Sorry. We re so and then we're repeating it, but now we are outlining this kind of idea here, up here. It's a bit different. Here I have 17, 19, 17, and then this idea 19, 17, 19 again as a sweep, and then 19, 21. 20 and this kind of power chord sweep. 22, 20, uh, 20 and 19. Sorry. So all together. Ah, before I forget, be aware with the string skipping to use. Upward pick slanting. And when you're going back, downward pick slanting. Ah, I forgot the second triplet run here, which goes like this. 14, 
It's kind of a pentatonic idea, 14, 17, 19, and again going to 14 on the B string. The Dorian scale, Dorian note again. So, let me try to play this now again. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the next section. That's the right way. All right, we're starting off with simply E played as an octave in three groupings. So our right hand here is doing first the downstroke on the octave, then the upstroke and then the downstroke. Then we're playing the flat five on the four and the G and lastly this kind of bluesy idea from the G, sharp, from the G to the G sharp, the minor third to the major third. And then again we are playing uh, the intro and now we're playing this kind of for me, it's some opeth sounding thing. Because opeth is a lot of, because opeth is a lot doing this kind of bluesy riffing and then it's adding the flat nine. And the flat five. And now we're going to the chord section. The chord section is pretty simple and basic. First we have E. And going to G, then C, and A. Then we're going again E, but this time at this power chord, we're moving our index to the fifth fret, playing this diminished, which represents A7, come from the Dorian scale. Going to A, playing G and F sharp, and then repeating it. Then we're going to the next chord section. Uh, the first chord section we're mostly in 5-4. Um, the, um, the A chord is in 6-4, you can see it in the tabs. And then we're going to the next section which is basically in 6-4. And here we have C, G, D minor. Going to A, the D minor is in 5-4. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. And now comes this idea. First off, we are starting with this kind of coming on B flat major, the root and the third, going to the root and the sharp eleven from B flat Lydian or F major scale. Then we're resolving to F, but this time with the minor third in the, uh, the major third in the bass here on the seventh fret. Going to F power chord, and then we're playing G F sharp zero E C as a power chord, and going to the dominant the B, which leads us to the next section, which is the solo section. So the first melody of this intro solo, which goes like this. <laughs> I love it. We're starting off with the E, going to the F sharp, going to the G and back to the F sharp and then to the D, and outlining this B minor chord here, playing the B. From the F sharp to the G we have a little triller. Then we're sliding from the E here on the 9th fret of the G string to the F sharp. Playing the E on the 9th fret of the G string and bending from the 5th fret to the 9th as uh, the 7th fret to the 9th fret with a pinched harmonic. Alright, and then comes this melody. Here we are first starting on the E an octave higher, on the 17th fret, on the B string. 
Then we're playing the second and bending to the minor third. Then we're going to the D, sorry. Playing the B again. So it's basically the same melody in Octafire with a little bit of phrasing difference. Ah, sorry. And now we have and we are in the same chord progression as before, so now comes the A major, the Dorian scale, and now we have this kind of Dorian lick here, which outlines an A major. We're first starting off coming from the A or seeing from the A, the four resolving into the third, going to the second, playing octave and fifths, 14th fret. With a little sweep, I do this. Then, then we're going to the next f um, fifths. The clock. Then we're going to the next major third. Second, and resolving to the A. And now comes the next melody. And we're again starting on the E, going up the E minor scale. Here staying horizontally on the G string. Ah, sorry, not slipping too wide. Then we're playing 12 12 on the G and on the D string. Doing a little pull off from the 12 fret, now doing a position shift. Before that, we have the index here, now we have the middle finger. Got the pull off to the E, over the F sharp from the G. Then we're doing a little thriller between D and E and sliding to the B and sliding to the A. Oh. <laughs> and the last melody for this chord section goes like this. We are first starting with the B on the 12th fret of the G string going to the A. Now we're playing this idea. G, A, B. G, A, D. So 12, uh, 10, 12, roll technique, 10, 10, we are roll technique. Now comes this melody. 14, 15, 14, 15 on the uh, B string, 12. Yeah. And now this. Ah, and now. 15, 17, and then bending to 17. Now we are in the next chord progression, and here we are first, and the first melody of this chord progression goes like this. We are first outlining via our horizontal slide and C major arpeggio, starting on the major third, going to the root, going to the fifth, major third, fifth, then we're going up the scale. Now comes the second melody. And here we are outlining a D minor chord starting on the minor third, here on the third in spread of the E string with the pinky. Then we're jumping to the root here on the D string, going to the minor third here on the G string. Coming from this shape, sliding to the next position where we're doing a sweep picking. 14, 15, 13, 17. Ah, uh, just 70 pull off and back again. Then we're going to the 12th fret. Doing a little trill between 13 and 12. Then we're resolving into the 13th fret of the B string. Now the next melody goes like this. Here first we're starting playing 15, 15 with the bar finger now on the B and on the G string. Because the 15th fret on the G string is now kind of a pedal note here. And then we are playing 15, 17, 15, 17, 18. Then we're sliding from the 17th fret on the E string to the 20th fret, outlining an F major chord with a 6. I'm going here from the 5th of the F major to the major 3rd. We are 5th, major 3rd, root, 6th, 
fifths, major third. And then we're playing this kind of idea where we first have um, 1719 and then 1717 on the G and on the B string. And then we're playing in triplets. Um, 20, 22, 20, 24, and back, resolving to the A of the 22nd fret on the B string. And now the last melody over the B dominant here, which represents B Phrygian minor scale, B Phrygian dominant scale, sorry, the E harmonic minor scale. And we were playing. And here we're just playing the scale down up to the A, but in between every second note is the, um, the open B string. And then we have this kind of idea. First we have here, seeing from the B, the fifths, ma minor sixth, fifths, fourth, major third, flat nine, root, resolving to the E. Going to the next riff, the riffs before the solo. So here we go. So in the first riff of the pre-solo riffs, it uh, goes like this. Okay, first off, we're starting with our main motif here for the riffing. E, F sharp, G, B and B flat to the flat 5. And then we are adding the 11th to the A, but we are not playing this one with an open string, we are playing this one with the 5th uh, fret on the E string. And then we are going from the B flat to the 7th, to the major 6th, the C sharp. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's a mixture out of 6, 8 and 8, 8. Now you can count 6, 8 and 8, 8 uh, also as 2, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, but with another additional two notes, we're getting a little bit of a 10 8 here, right? As well, and yes, so um, after we're repeating it, we are additional playing G and F sharp. And when we are repeating this two times in the um, fourth time, or in the, the second time of the second time, <laughs> the second section of the second time, we are adding this diminished chord. Uh, sorry, yeah. It's an E diminished, so we have E, C sharp, uh, G, E, sorry, and the B flat. And now we are transposing everything up to the minor third. So we have. And then again another uh, diminished chord. And the inner system stays the same with the intervals, but this time the root note is a G. The difference here, of course, is the fingering because we don't have open strings anymore. So we have in slow. Right, then comes the next riff section, which goes like this. All right, and here we are starting again with our main riff, main idea. And then we are jumping to the D, and then we are playing the E again. And the E is played 1-8 before the next bar is starting, so we don't have a 7-8 bar, it's not like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's more like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And in the second bar we're sliding from the D to the D sharp. Now we're transposing everything again to G, but this time we're going to the 7th. Not up to, to this octave, but to the lower octave. And then 
And then we have the following riff. And now comes a pretty cool A Phrygian dominant kind of part where we have notes on the bass, root notes, and playing the open string again in between. And that goes like this. And in notes we have A, B flat, E, D, C sharp, A, B flat, E, and F. And now we are going to the solo. The solo is based or it's played over the two riffs that we had before, the one in E and the one in G, and again the A Phrygian dominant section part. And we're starting off in E and we are starting with this pretty cool arpeggio idea. Okay, and we're starting with this E minor flat 9 arpeggio. 7, 9, 10, sorry, 9, 7, 10. And we are sweeping from the D to the G string, and the 7 is, are the first two notes I have on, so hammer on, sweep, sweep. And this one is more a chromatical approach to, to going to the F sharp. Then we are outlining D major 6 or D dominant 6 kind of sound. And going from the um, and going from the 10th fret to the 12th and sliding to the 15th fret, resolving to this kind of melody. And here we have 12, 14, 15. And then thriller between 14, 15, resolving to 12, 15 on the B string. 12 on the E string. Now we have this pretty awesome open string passage where we have E, B, D, A, B, G, and then pull off between A, G, and F sharp, D, and the open B string. Now we're outlining a D major 7. First off playing the F sharp and the G. And then comes the arpeggio. Where we have here D, F sharp, A, C sharp, D, and A. Now comes a pretty awesome sweep attacking kind of lick. And in slow, the next it goes like this. And first up, we are playing an E minor 7 arpeggio, sweeping from the E to the D string. And then we are outlining E minor triad, playing the 9, the F sharp, sliding to the A, going back, and then we are outlining B minor arpeggio. So again, E minor, slide, B minor. And then we're jumping from the pinky to the index and outlining E B minor 7 with a 7 on top. Sliding from here, so in fret, so we have 14, 17, 16, 16 with a roll technique. Middle finger, 15th fret. And then 14, 17, sliding to the next position of a B minor triad. So here, here's the minor third, and then we're playing 22. 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, resolving into 17 on the A string. So this is the first section over E. Now comes the first section over G and it goes like this. First we're starting with a G minor scale run, G Dorian scale run in this case. And here we are playing 3-2-3 three, three kind of um, idea. Three notes on the A string, then two notes on the D string, and three notes on the G string. Now comes this little triplet idea. 
chromatic from the 12th to the 14th fret. Then we're playing from the minor third and G here on the 11th fret of the B string to the fifth and to the flat five. Getting that little bit of kind of bluesy and jazzy sound. Then we're playing G and G on an octave, resolving to the F, going to the E, the major six again from the Dorian scale. With the little trill we are resolving to the fifths of G, the D. Now comes another cool open string idea, this time with a G string. And in notes we have, uh, what is it, B flat, G, B flat, A, sorry, not A, C. I'm going to A this time. F, G, A, F, and then we're playing D, F. And then sliding into the G. Again, sorry, now comes this scale idea, first a little triplet from the um, G to the E, the major 6 again, then we're going to the D and back to the E and now we're playing in thirds. The scale descending having D, E, F, sorry not, D, E, C, D, B flat, C, A, B flat, resolving into B. And we are now back into our E minor, riffing an E minor kind of idea. Okay, and the next section goes like. So we're first outlining this E minor chord without the minor third. Playing the fifth, the root, and then the fourth bending to the fifth. Then comes this melody. Which is out of the scale of E Dorian. We have B, C sharp the Dorian 6, D, E, G, E, B, E. Now comes this little chromatic idea. Where we're starting with the B and going chromatically through the A. And then we're playing the octave of the first note of the sequence, in this case the B again. Then we're putting everything two frets below, starting on the A. Then we're starting on the uh, G and playing G, F sharp, B, B flat, E, B flat. Oh, sorry. Now comes this idea, this little run. So in here we are first starting with G, F sharp, going to E, and then going to the scale A sending. Now we're sweeping through the E, uh, through the B to the uh, D, outlining some sort of um, B minor seven um, arpeggio, starting with the minor seven, the A, going to the F sharp, sliding to the D. Now we are outlining G major 7, D, B, G, and F sharp. Then we're sliding up to the 9th fret to the B again and outlining some sort of E sus 2 arpeggio. So 19, 14, then sweeping through uh, 17, 16, so, and then here on the D string, sorry, we have kind of a scare. Well, we have 19, 17, 16, 19, 17, 16. Now comes this diminished idea. We're first starting off on the B flat and outline E diminished, first inversion. Having this kind of pull of three rhythm. Then going to the next inversion. On the D, um, B and G string, going to the next inversion on the E and on the D, B string. Ah, no, but here, sorry, we are playing a six note treble pattern. So we are outlining the full four note diminished arpeggio and three string sweep picking. Going to the next inversion, doing another pull over them. So again, we have. Alright, and so much for the last E section solo. Now we're going to A Phrygian dominant, and here we are playing the following line.
we are starting off with E and F, doing a little thriller. Then we're jumping to the G string. We have a little bit of weird string skipping now here. Playing A, G, and F. Going back to the G. Now we're jumping to D and C sharp and doing just a little thrill, no ba ba da da, so just a ba da da. <laughs> going straight to the F, back to the C sharp, and going from the F to the E. So again. Now we are playing A and A flat, uh, A sharp, or B flat, A and B flat. And then we're going to D and C sharp here on the A string. And play A and B flat on the A string. Now we have F and E again. And now we are playing again the D and the C sharp, but with the E as a pedal note. B flat, E pedal note, A E pedal note. Then we're playing this kind of a scale melody. Oh, sorry. We're starting with a G, B flat A. Through our roll technique, we are reaching the E on the P string, and then again playing here, and then again we're playing um, G, B flat A, G, and then in triplet F E D E. So again slow. Uh, sorry. So again slow. We are outlining again E diminished, starting with the E and making a little bit of 60 or 30 second note, depends how you count it. Triplet, a triller here with the minor third going to the um, diminished seven and back to the root. Uh, sorry, and then we are sliding straight to the next inversion, and here we're doing this kind of double pull off, and then we're again we're doing. Sliding to the next inversion and doing another double pull off. Then we have this melody. We're first playing E, F, G, and we're bending from the G to the A. Back. Then we have the trill between F and E. D, E. Then we're going to the A, and then we're playing. This triplet um, diminished slide idea, which is really really common for Petrucci, especially in his solo record, in his last kind of records. We're going in minor thirds, 18th fret on the E and on the G string, sliding to 15th fret on the G string, playing 15E, e, sliding 12 G string. Then we have a sliding A sending and back D sending. So we have. So now we're going to the final, last two speedy arpeggio kind of sections, and the first one goes like this. First we are playing C sharp and D again, going to the, uh, the F, and then we're going to the A and pulling back to F. D and C sharp, and then we're playing G F on the E string. And then we have this idea, this F major augmented kind of sound. We have the major seven, the root, the major third, and the augmented fifths. We're playing this one in octaves, sorry, and then we're playing from this position another octave higher. And this is super fast. Then we're doing a D minor sweep. And now comes this kind of D minor run. In the scale of D harmonic minor, we're starting off with the D, uh, 17th fret on the uh, A string. Playing this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight note phrase. So we're going from the D string to the G string, uh, from the A string to the D string. And on the A string we are playing three notes, on the D string we are playing five notes. Three notes is an unequal number of notes on one string, so we have to use pixelanting, in this case upward pixelanting. 
then we're going one position shift below. This is again something which Petrucci is doing a lot in the last couple of years, doing this kind of Rusty Cooley inspired licks, as I would assume, because I know that he's a Rusty Cooley fan. I mean, Rusty Cooley is at his guitar um, universe camp all the time, and Rusty is doing this a lot by playing an ascending line but going into this direction of the uh, of the neck. So really interesting how uh, Petrucci is developing some new ideas. Now we have 15, 17, 19 on the D string and going to the G string where we have 15, 18, 19. And then we're going to the 18 spread here and playing 18, 19, 21, 18, 20 and bending to 22. And this is the solo, the final, the epic solo of The Passage of Time from Liquid Tension Experiment. Now, after that, we have another rhythm section over the keyboard solo, and here we are taking the same rhythm idea which we have in G, so this... Um, and then we're playing just one, mi one minor third higher, so three frets higher, and another three frets higher. And then again the A frigid dominant kind of idea, but this time two times, twice. And after that we are again going to our chords, which we have in the intro, but this time played at 6-8, not at 5-8. And then we're going to the next, to the final, little solo melody. So here we go. Okay, and the first melody goes like this. And we're starting off in A, going to B, C, and then we're bending from E to F. Going from the E to the C, now we're playing the A here on the G string, sliding from the C to D, going to B, going to the high G, bending from the A to the B, playing A with G F sharp, <laughs> and then we have this kind of idea, we're playing F sharp G F sharp A, no, sorry F sharp E F sharp E, ah! F sharp G, F sharp E. Going to the uh, B, and then one octave below. Then again we're starting the next melody with the same way like the first one. But we're again going straight to the B, and then we're outlining C major 7. And sliding to E. I'm playing double note, the B and the G, so we have a sweep, um, 1770, going to 19, the major 7, to E, and now the B and the G as double note. Now comes this pretty cool melody. And here for we're starting first with an E minor sweep, going to the C, so we have um, 21, 20, 19, and going to 20, playing B, G, and then we have uh, D sharp, D, and C, then we're outlining this um, G major 9, and bending from the 9 to the major 3rd. And then we're playing D, C, B. Now comes in D major arpeggio, and here we are playing. Uh, this idea first. We have the fifth, the major third, so 17th fret, 14th fret, 15th fret, then again starting on the major third, going to the fifth octave below. Then we're going to the root here. And sliding from the fifth to the fourth, again the root as a parallel, and then the major third. Now comes this kind of scale run.
We're first starting with a CDE on the D string, then we're playing an 8 note. F sharp or 16 note, depending on how you count it or how I will tap it. <laughs> F sharp, G, um, A going to the B. Then we're starting here on the G and playing G, B, A. And then we're going to C and playing C, D, E. And playing F sharp, A on the E string. Now comes the last lick, the last idea, and it goes like this. Yes, so like this. So we are first starting off here with the B, playing B F sharp, going to E, D sharp, playing back to the F sharp. So keep that phrasing in mind. And then we are transitioning to the and then we are trans and then we are transposed this kind of idea, sequence and phrase to um, E, D sharp, C and B. So we have the six note, those two six note phrases. One, two, uh, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now comes more of a five note, four note phrase. Sorry. One, two, three, four. Two. Now comes more three note phrase. One, two, three. One, two, three. Starting on the E, playing E, D sharp, B, D sharp, B, C. Now we have 32nd note kind of um, chromatical madness, speed madness here. First we are starting here on the D, going from 19, 18, 6, uh, 17, 16 and then back again. I'm playing the same fret on the B string. And then we're playing G, A, B. And then we're outlining an A diminished. Resolving it to E. Sliding. This is the final lick of the last solo from the, the Passage of Time. After that we play the intro riff again. The this one here. And then comes the... This riff here and then the first two sections of the complete intro. And this is the full, and this was the full note on note lesson on In the Passage of Time by Liquid Tension Experiment. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, comment, or share. And I hope I'm going to see you in my next video so far. Cheers and stay progress! Goodbye!